subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, you are welcome to SHS Hour in, with Joy Learning. This is Core Mathematics for SHS 2. And in our previous lesson, we looked at linear equations. And that we did part one and two. And today we want to look at linear inequalities. My name is Evans Oday. I'm taking you through for this course. I'm sure you are ready with your books your pen, your calculators. Don't sit as if you're watching a movie, but get ready and let's start math. Math is so fun. Math is so interesting. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy this lesson. Let's do our starter as we always do mental exercise. Very, very important because mathematics has one of the major um, goal is to build our mental capacity. And so it's good for us to always exercise our brains. So today we want to look at how fast we can multiply a number by five. How fast we can multiply a number by five in three seconds. Can you do this? Now let's see. For example, if I say multiply five times 54, how fast can you do this in five or let's say less than five seconds? All right, so we want to learn the trick. But then I will teach you the trick in two different ways. I will teach you a trick that you can multiply 5 by an odd number and 5 by an even number. So let's pick one example. Let's say if I give you 5 times 54, and 54 is an even number, all you need to do is to split the 54 into 2, or you will divide 54 by 2. Now, if you divide 54 by 2 or you half it, your answer will give you 27. Now, the 27, all you need to do is to attach 0 to it. And so 5 times 54 becomes 270. That is the answer. Again, if I say do 5 times 14, how fast can you do this in 3 seconds? Just split 14 into 2 or half it. If you have 14, you have seven. Just attach zero to it, and that becomes your answer. And so you can do this for all numbers that multiplies five. Now, if the number happens to be an odd number, for example, if I say five times 17, 17 is an odd number. But we know that any time you subtract one from odd number, you always land into even number. And that is true. And so when I take away one from seven, I have 16. And 16 is an even number. So divide 16 by 2. And that will give you 8. And so 8 is the first part of your answer. This time around, instead of attaching 0, you are going to attach 5. And so 17 times 5 is 85. That's cool, right? Now, you realize that in multiplication of 5, or multiplying numbers by 5, they keep on rhyming. When you say 5 times 1, you get 5. 2, 10, 3, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So they keep on rhyming in that direction. So any number that multiplies 5 and the number is even, it will always end with 0. And if it is odd, it will always end with 5. So let me give you an example to try. What is 5 times 23? Good. So you subtract 1 from 23, you have 22, you divide it by... 2, you have 11, you attach 5, and so 5 times 23 is 115. Beautiful. So you can do this as a form of exercise, okay? Let me give you another exercise to do right now. As you do it mentally, no pen, no paper, no calculator. Do it mentally. Look straight to the screen and then do this. What is 5 times 36? Right, so text says you split that into two, you get 18. 
and so you attach zero. So the answer becomes 180. So five times 36 is 180. Last one, last drill. Try this one. What is five times 61? Three seconds. So 61 is odd number. So you subtract one, you get 60. You divide 60 by two, that will be, give you 30, and you attach five. So your answer becomes 305. That is good. Well, let us continue. So you can be practicing this in the house. And uh, you engage your mind, you reach your mind, you sharpen your brain, you increase memory as you engage yourself in, through mental mathematics. Today, we are looking at linear inequalities for SHS2 core mathematics. And by the end of this section, you should be able to translate a word statement into linear inequalities. Then solve linear inequalities questions. Then three, determine the solution sets of linear inequalities in a given domain. Finally, four, you'll be able to illustrate solution sets of linear inequalities on a number line. That is our objective, or our objective for the day. Now let's start with the question, what is linear inequalities? Remember we've, we started with linear equation. If you didn't watch that lesson, you can go to YouTube or any of our social um, bundles and then you can check the video, you can watch the video once again and revise your knowledge on linear equation and that will lead you to linear inequalities. So we are going to do almost the same thing. The difference is that whilst equation involves equal sign, linear inequalities involves inequality sign. And we are going to look at that very soon. So what is linear inequality? I have a simple definition here. Linear inequality is an inequality which involves linear function, all right? A linear inequality contains one of the following symbols of linear, oh sorry, of inequalities. That is less than symbol, greater than symbol, less or equal to, and greater or equal to. Any of this always finds itself in between expressions. That makes it linear inequalities, or that makes it inequalities, right? So that is the definition for linear inequality. Now, how do we form linear inequalities or translate um, word expression into linear inequalities. I have a question here. A number n is greater than 4. How will we write this? Number n is greater than 4. So number n is greater than 4 can be written as this. That means n is greater than 4. Now when we look at or when we're looking at equation and if I say x is equals to 4, you see that x gives us exact value of 4. But if I say x is greater than 4, it means n can be a lot of numbers. It means it can be a lot of numbers. It can be a number right from 5, 6, 7 up to infinity because we're talking about greater than. And so in equation, we get a specific answer. But in inequality, we get range of answers. Now look at this one. A number x is greater than or equal to 9. How will you write this in a mathematical form? A number x is greater than or equal to 9. And that can be x is greater or equal to 9. It can be written this form. Right, now try this one. How will you write this one in mathematical form? 3 is less than or equal to a number n. 3 is less than or equal to a number n. Great. I'm sure you came up with the answer as this. 3 is less than or equal to n. What about this one? A bit strange, right? A number m is at least 3. A number m is at least 3. How will you write it? I'm sure you came up with this answer, m is greater or equal to 3. If we say a number m is at least 3, then we're looking at 3 or more. 
If right now I come to your house and I say I'm going to give gifts to people who are three years and above, I will say the person must be at least three years. It means the least age I can give award to is three years. So anybody above three can receive the award. So if I say at least, it means you're looking at a number and above, okay? A number and above. What about this one? A number P is at most five. At most five. It means we are looking at something that is five or less. If I say I'm going to give a word to people who are at the age of at most 20 years, it means someone with age of 21 will not receive. Because I say at most, that means the maximum is five or 20. So we can give it to 20 or less. And so P is less or equal to 5. Beautiful. How will you write this statement also in a form of, or in a mathematical form? 12 more than twice a number is less than 25. 12 more than twice a number is less than 25. If you could remember, when we're dealing with equation, we said more than means addition. So we add something to it. So in writing this, we are going to look at two times a number plus 12 is less than 25, right? So 12 more than a number or 12 more than twice a number is less than 25 can be written as this. Three less than a number is not more than five. Look at this statement too. Three less than a number is not more than five. You see the way I phrase this one too? How will you put this in a mathematical form? Three less than a number is not more than five. So we can write it as three n minus three less or equal to five. It shouldn't be more than five means it can be five or less. It can be five or less. So we write it less or equal to five. Good. Twice a number more than 12 is at least six. Try this one too. Let's see. Twice a number. Twice a number more than 12 is at least six. And so we can put it this way as 12 plus 2 times a number is greater or equal to 6. Greater or equal to 6. All right. Now, the next thing we want to look at is to represent um, inequality on number line. Or representation of truth sets on the number line. So let's see how we can represent Answers. Let's say you solve inequality question and your answer comes as three. Sorry, x is greater or equal to three. How will you represent this on your number line or on a number line? That is what we want to look at. Example, x is less than negative three. How will you do this? Representing it on a number line. So we first have to draw a number line. And this is our number line with our zero in the middle. We have numbers moving on the um, left and those that goes on the right. So you have the positive side, you have the negative side. And we want to represent x is less than negative 3. Now, first of all, what are the numbers that are less than negative 3? Can you think of a number that is less than negative 3? Yeah, negative 4 is less than negative 3. Negative 5, negative 6, and so on and so forth. Now, my next question is, Negative 3 and negative 2. Which one is greater? Beautiful. Negative 2 is more than negative 3. So in line with negative, the higher value rather become less. So if I have negative 3, that is less than negative 1. So here we have negative 3. That is our point of reference. And so because we are dealing with less than, we put our... Um, circle on negative three and look at the movement of the arrow or the direction of the arrow that is the less than you see it points this direction so it means we are moving 
in that way. So we just move our arrow, showing that all these numbers to infinity are numbers that are less than negative 3. Now, you see I didn't shade the circle that I pointed on the negative 3 because negative 3 is not inclusive when we are listing numbers that are less than negative 3. So we leave it open like this. But where it is inclusive, where we have x greater or equal to negative 3, then we shade the pointer to make it represent 3 inclusive. All right, let's take another example and see. S is greater or equal to 2. Represent this on the number line. So this is our number line. We have our number line starting from 0 to infinity, then 0 to the negative, also infinity. So here we're looking at 2 as a point of reference. So we put our pointer on 2. And 2 here is inclusive, like I said it earlier on. It's inclusive. And so we shade the pointer. And then where are we moving towards? We are looking at arrow pointing to the right direction. So we draw our arrow pointing right. So all numbers that move from this onwards becomes numbers that are greater or equal to 2. Now, look at this one. We have negative 2 less than x, less than 3. How do you represent this on a number line? How do you do this? So first of all, let's bring our number line. And here we're looking at negative 2 up to 3. X is in the middle. And X takes values from negative 2, which is not inclusive, up to positive 3. And so numbers that are within this range are numbers we are making references to. And so we first have to make our indicator be on negative 2 and another one be on negative a positive 3. But because this is not negative 2 inclusive and positive 3 inclusive, we don't shade our pointer. And then we join these two with a straight line to indicate that the numbers we are making references to are within the range of negative 2 up to positive 3. And that is the representation of this answer on the number line. Then try this one. Let's see if you can do it. Try it and let's see. Right. So I'm sure you've been able to do something for yourself. And bear in mind that we are looking at two different symbols here. One inclusive, one exclusive. Now we are looking at negative 0.5. How do we position negative 0 0.5? And that is between 0 and negative 1. That is negative 0 0.5 is between 0 and negative 1. So you can see that from here. Then we bring our 4. And here the 4 is not shaded because it's not inclusive. So we make our pointer go there. Then we join these two points together. And that represents the range of values of x that lies between negative 0 0.5 and 4. Look at this type of example too. How do we represent x is less than negative 1 or x is greater than or equal to 3? So look at the three categories of examples that I've put across. The one that has got a single inequality, the one that has got two inequality that's handled between, I mean, ranges of numbers, and this one gives you two extremities. I mean, we have x is less than negative 1 to infinity, and x is greater than positive 3 to infinity. How do you represent these two informations on a number line? So let's get our number line ready. Okay, so we have our 0, 1, 2, 3 up to infinity, the negative 1, negative 2 also up to infinity. So the first one says x is less than negative 1. So we put our pointer on negative 1, and this time around we shade it because you're talking about x is less or equal to. Then the arrow moves to the left side to infinity. Then we put the next one on positive 3, the arrow goes to the right side, making it to infinity. So this is how we can represent 
these two informations on a number line. Right. So what we want to do next is to solve a few examples. We take inequality questions, we solve them, and see how we can represent them on number line. And this is very simple because we've done equation. And most of the questions that we solved, we are going to use the same approach in solving questions here in inequality. The only difference is that whilst we are dealing with equal sign in equation, here we are dealing with inequality sign in inequalities. And so the approach is the same. So your knowledge in equation can make it easy for you to solve questions in inequality. So we'll take our first example, which reads, solve 3x plus 1 all divided by 4 minus 3 plus 4x all divided by 3 less or equal to 1. Then we have to illustrate our answer on a number line. So how do we solve this? So if you had watched the earlier lesson on equation, this becomes very handy for you. So what do we do first? Right. We take the LCM since we have um, fractions involved. So we take the LCM. What is the LCM here? Right. That is 12. So LCM is 12. So what I'm going to do is to multiply through by the LCM, which is 12. So we are going to multiply everything by 12. So we have 12 times 3x so you multiply everything by 12 so there are three terms here the first term by 12 the second term by 12 and the last term at the extreme end also by 12 now we simplify. 4 here divide itself as 1 and divide the 12 here as 3. And the 3 there will multiply everything here as that. Then minus 3 also divide itself 1 and divide here 4. And the 4 multiplies everything 3 plus 4x less or equal to 12. So we now simplify. We expand and simplify. What is 3 times 3 here? And then 3 multiplies this as that. Then a negative 4 is going to multiply this as negative 12. And negative 4 multiply this as negative 16. Don't forget the negative. Don't multiply negative 4 by 3 and just write negative 12. And then the other side you keep it as negative 16 and that will not be correct. Remember, negative times positive will give you negative. So, we are going to simplify this. So, we can see we have light terms here. Our 9x minus 16 are light terms. Then we can keep our 12 here. 3 minus 12 will give us negative 9. And that negative 9 will move to the other side to become positive 9. Or we can say we add additive inverse to both sides to be the same now what is 9 minus 16x 9 minus 16x will give us so negative all right Good. So we have negative 7s less than 21. So what we do next? Like we did with the equation, we divide both sides by negative x. Now here, we divide here by negative x. So negative 7, sorry, negative 7. And divide here by negative 7. Like I told you the last time, the law of equation, whatever is done to the left-hand side, must be done to the right-hand side. So they will balance. So we divide by negative, and because we are dividing by negative, when we write our x as the answer, the symbol changes from, sorry, 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 the symbol changes from being less than to greater than, because we divide both sides by negative, and I will explain that to you very soon. Now, if I 
group the light terms by moving all the x to the other side, I would have written my answer as negative 3 less than x. So if I say negative 3 less or equal to x, and I'm mentioning s first, then I must say s is greater than or equal to negative 3. If I say I am older than you, so I will say Evans is older than maybe Akwesi. And now you mention Akwesi first. Will you still say Akwesi is older than Evans? No, you will say Akwesi is less or maybe younger than Evans. So if I say S is greater than 3, and I mention 3 first, I will say 3 is less than X. And so that is what happened. That's why we have to divide both sides by negative and change the sign so it will conform with um, the answer. If someone has also done it the other way around, the person will get the same answer as ours. And so for this very question, our answer comes as um, X is greater or equal to negative 3. Now, representing this on a number line will give us this. So this is our X greater than negative 3, and we put our pointer at negative 3, and the arrow goes to the right, which gives us the answer. Beautiful. All right, let's take another example. Example number two. So here we have four plus three on four, or into bracket s plus two, less or equal to three on eight x plus one. Now, how do we solve this one and represent our answer on a number line? We first can maybe expand the bracket. So we have four, then three on four times that will give us three on four x. Then we are multiplying 3 on 4 times 2. Number 2 divide itself 1 and divide here 2. So that gives us 3 on 2. Then we bring our symbol 3 on 8x plus 1. So what next? We look at the LCM and multiply through by the LCM. And here the LCM is 8. So everything by 8. Then we have 4 times 8, which is 32. Then the 4 here would divide the 8. As 2 and 2 times 3 here will give us 6. Then 2 divide the 8 as 4, multiplying the 3 here to give us 12. Then we bring our symbol. Now 8 will divide itself as 1 and multiply the 3s as 3s plus 8 times 1, 8. So we just group like terms and then we simplify. So 6 is here. I can bring it here. This is positive 3. It comes here as negative 3x. Our symbol is there. Then this is 8. Now 32 plus 12 gives us 44. And that is positive. So it comes here as negative 44. Now what is 6x minus 3x? That's 2x. Oh, sorry, 3x. So less or equal to this minus that will give us negative 36. So we want to find x. We divide both sides by 3. And our x becomes less or equal to negative 12. So when you draw the number line for this, you realize that the number line, we are talking about x is less or equal to negative 12. Our pointer goes to, um, our pointer goes to negative 12. And negative 12 be somewhere here. So we put a pointer here, we shade it. And let's say negative 13 here, then we move towards that direction. And that will give us x less or equal to negative 12. So that is how this question can be solved. Now let's move on to another question. Question number three. And this is a little bit different from what we've done previously. Here we have two symbols representing in the expression. How do we do this? So let me have my three less or equals two into bracket one on four x minus that then we have two so here to solve this question your aim is to make x alone or leave s alone in between the two signs 
And so all other numbers, you have to find a way of eliminating them. And since we have a fraction here, we first have to eliminate a fraction by multiplying through by the LCM, which is 4. And so 3 by 4 will give us 12 here. We'll bring our sign. And then this will cancel itself. That is a 4 cancel 4. So giving us X. Then minus 4 also cancel 4. Leaving us with 3. Then our symbol comes. Then 2 comes. Now we want to get rid of the 3. And to get rid of the negative 3, we have to add additive inverse. We mentioned it last time. Additive inverse to both sides. So additive inverse of negative 3 will give us positive 3. So 12 plus 3 here. Our sign comes x minus 3 also plus 3. Sign comes then 2 plus 3. And so here we have 15. Then negative 3 plus 3 will give us 0. So we have our x left. Then we have 5. So this becomes the answer. Then we can represent this on the number line. The number line is here, but the answer here is not the same. So let me skip that and then draw a new one. So we'll draw our number line once again. And since all are positive, I could only leave some small space for negative numbers because we are talking about positive numbers here. So maybe let's put negative, let's start from um, 5. Then we go to 10. So here we have 5, positive, 10, 15, 20. Right. So how do you represent this? Our 5 is here. So we can put 5 here. And then our 15 is here. We put it there. And remember, 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 5 can be written as 5 also less or equal to x less or equal to 15. They are the same. So... When we join this together, and then we shade this, since our inequality sign is inclusive. So the 5 is inclusive, and the 15 is inclusive. So that becomes the answer to this question. All right. Right, so our next question, which I would love you take a picture of it and you solve it on your own and see if you get the same answer as I have. Or you can just write it in some few seconds and see if you can use maybe a minute or two to solve it. All right, let's try it together and see whether we get the same answer. So once again, what we have here, we have fractions involved. So we try to eliminate a fraction by multiplying everything by the LCM. And for the LCM of 3, oh no, I can see something here. Which means I must work on that first. So I have to repeat my 1 on 3x minus So let me try the other method I mentioned that we can expand the bracket here before we multiply two by the same. Let me try that approach here and see. So I'm going to expand this to that, and that will give me 4x. Then negative 1 over 4 times this will give us positive. Remember, 2 cancel itself, 1 and 2 can divide here as 2. So we have 1 on 2. Then we bring our symbol. We maintain our 3x. That is for this one. And this is one whole number, 1 over 3. And so 1 times 3 will give us um, 3 plus 1 will give us 4. So then we get minus 4 over 3. Now, be careful with this. If you are trying to open up mixed number into an improper fraction and there is negative there, 
try to ignore the negative and then deal with it as if there's no negative and keep the negative as your final answer. Don't multiply three times one and say negative three and when you add it to the one, it will give you negative two and bring it down. That will make, give you error. And so we keep the negative there, then we do it as if there's no negative, then we bring our negative back. So this is what we have. We are going to simplify this by multiplying through by our LCM. And here we have three, we have four, we have two, we have three. What to be the LCM for this? Which number will, be, will allow three, four, and two to divide without any remainder? That is what we want to do. So we can pick 12, will be the LCM. So let's multiply everything by 12. Everything by 12. So everything by 12 means I have one on three, X by 12. I have negative one on four, X by 12. I have plus one on two also by 12. Then I have less or equal, less, sorry, greater than three also X by 12, minus four on three by 12. You can choose to avoid the step that I've just created and just do the multiplication straight and bring the answer. It's accepted. You won't lose any mark for this. So 3 divide itself 1 and divide 12 as 4. So 4 times 12 will give us 4x, right? Then we go to the next term. The next term we have 4 also divide itself 1 and divide this as 3 and 3 times negative x will give us negative 3x. Then we come to the 2 part. 2 divides 12 as 6 and 6 will multiply the 1 at the top will give us still 6. Then our symbol comes. What is 3 times 12? So to multiply this mentally without using calculator, just do 3 times 1 which is 3 and that becomes 30 and 3 times 2 and that will give you 6. So we get 30. Six. As simple as that, so we get it six. Then three can divide itself one and divide twelve as four, and the four will multiply this as negative sixteen. That is, we are doing four times four, sixteen. So now we have um, this should be x. Sorry, that should be x. Now we have four x minus three x plus six. Greater than 36 minus 16. What do we do? We simplify. So, or by say group like terms. Now 4x and that will give us x. Then we move 36x to become negative 36 here. Then our symbol comes. This is negative 16. So we keep negative 16 here. This is positive. It becomes negative 6. You subtract this from this, what do we have? We have negative 35x. And then this and this will give us negative 22. Now we are going to do dividing both sides by 35. If you divide both sides by 35, let me repeat that over here, 35x greater or equal to negative 22. So we divide here by negative 35 x, we divide here by negative 35. So our x now becomes less than, instead of greater than, because we've taken the negative to divide, or negative coefficient to divide itself. And so we are going to write, um, here we have negative 22 divided by negative 35, will give us 22 over 35. The negative will cancel itself. Now, could there, be, could there be any number that can divide 22 and 35 at the same time without a remainder? Apart from one, there is no other number. So we maintain our answer. And this is a proper fraction. So we keep it as x is, equals, or x is less than 22 over 35. And so we can do x such that x is less than 22 over 35 and put that into set notation. Since we are being asked to write the truth set of the inequality. So 
This becomes our answer. Right. Question number five looks like question number three that we solved. So we can do this as well, right? Very cool and very simple to work with. So you have to solve this and represent or illustrate your answer on a number line. Illustrate your answer on a number line. Right. So we have negative 1 over 4 less than 3 on 5. Sorry, 3 on 4. into brackets, 3x minus 2, less than half. And once again, since we have two inequality symbols, we have to work the middle number until we get just the variable alone in the middle. And here we can see we have very complicated expression in between the two inequality signs. So our aim is to make sure we reduce this so that the x remain alone. So what we can do first is to expand the bracket in the middle. So we maintain our negative 1 on 4 and bring our symbol. We expand. So we have 3 times 3 here will give us 9x on 4 minus we have 6 on 4. Then we close the bracket or let's, let's leave it then we have half. So after the expansion, now we can see clearly our denominators. And they are all the same. And so the LCM, so they're not the same. We have 4 and 2. And the LCM for 4 and 2 will be just 4. So we multiply everything by 4. Of course, that would make this one leaves us with 1. Then our symbol comes. This Multiply by 4, will cancel the 4 here. So we have our 9x minus 4 here also cancel the 4, leaving our with our 6. Then we bring our sign. 2 will cancel 4 as 2, and 2 multiplies 1 will give us 2. Good. So we still, we are targeting the middle number. Now we have to find a way of taking away the negative 6 from the middle part of the expression. And what do we do? We add additive inverse to negative 6. And the additive inverse of negative 6 is positive 6. So we add it to both sides of the equation. So negative 1 plus 6, 9x minus 6 plus 6, then our sign 2 plus 6. So then we move on to say that this will give us 5 here. We bring our sign we have this and this will give us 0. We have our 9x. Then we bring our sign again. Then we have 8. So this is what we have. We still want to target the middle number and leave it as x, not with any number attached to it, right? So what do we do? We divide everything by the coefficient of the x, and that is 9. So we divide here by 9, divide here by 9, divide here by 9. What do we have? Our answer becomes 5 or 9 less than x less than 8 on 9. So this will be our answer. Then we will represent this on the number line. So let's do this on the number line. We have this, we have that, and they are all positive. And so since they are all positive, we can shift our zero somewhere here and keep only one number for nine because we are interested in getting the uh, positive side. So what we do is we have to introduce our fractions. Here we have, we can start with five or nine and say six or nine and say seven or nine. Then we have eight or nine. Then nine or nine will give us just one. Right. So we now locate our um, pointers. I mean, where we have our negative, we have our nine, 5 over 9, which we have it here, and then 8 over 9 also is there. 
Now, none of them is inclusive, so we don't shade. Then we join the line or the points together, and we can write on top 5 or 9 less than x, less than 8 or 9. So that will be the answer for this very question. And of course, we can um, see that from here. Um, oh, so let me just go to... Right. So let's look at this question. You can take the screenshots or you can try on your own right away. Just write it down. Try doing something. Even if you don't finish and you're able to get to the latter part and, I'm, and I solve and you look at your answer, you can know that you'll be able to finish everything or not. So try your hand on this. All right. When you do it, you're supposed to get this, but then let's try quickly and see if you can finish that as our last question for the day. So we have one on two, x minus five on six. We expand this, so that will give us that plus. When we expand it, multiplying this by the two, will give us negative. So two divide itself one and divide the other three. So we are going to have five on three. And then our sign comes, then we have one plus x. Multiply everything by the OCM, and the OCM is 6. So here by 6 will give us, so 2 divided 6 as 3. So you have 3x minus 5x because 6 will cancel 6. 2 divided 6 as 2. 2 times 5, we get 10. We bring our sign. 6 times this will give us 6, plus 6 times that will give us 6x. I'm sure you're getting the same thing. Right. So we group like terms. Or we simplify. This and this will give us negative 2x, negative 10, less than or equal to. So there's an equal to alongside 6 plus 6x. So a group like terms, I can keep negative 2x here, move this one to, or this one. Let me go to the other side and see the other difference that will come. So let me keep this one here as negative 10, move the 6 as negative 6, keep the symbol here, 6x, and move this as positive 2 x then this minus this will give us negative 16 this and this will give us 8x then finally we can say we divide both sides by 8 here by 8 here by 8 we can have our 8 device negative 16 will give us negative 2 our symbol will come then we have our 8 uh, x now, we can't leave our answer like this because we have to find S. We have to mention S first. And since we have S first, we can say, therefore, S is greater or equal to negative 2. And on the number line, we can just have our number line. And here we need more positive, so we have more negative. So we have negative 1, next 2, next 3. Then we can keep positive 1 here. Representing this on the number line will give us this. Then we shade. Then we point the arrow to that side and that becomes our answer all right so with this we come to the end of inequality for shs 2 inequality for shs 2 so we, we are done with equation we did part one and part two and we are done with inequality as well in our next episode we'll look at a different topic and so Stay tuned to this channel and continue enjoying mathematics and other subjects that comes your way. With me, my name is Evans Oday. I've been your facilitator for this section. Thanks so much for making time. Bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.